I'm a lawyer, and so, so I deal in a lot of crisis uh, as it relates to the food sector. It's something that lawyers end up fussing a lot over in crisis, specifically recalls related to adulteration of foreign bodies, is about insurance and insurance coverage and, and claims and uh, ultimately, you know, what is the insured risk and to what extent it sort of bleeds out. And I met JP at this conference a few years ago and I had the opportunity to go visit his facility in Bolton and uh, it kicked ass, it was so good. Uh, and so I'm super pleased to, uh, to introduce JP Perot to come and talk to us about X-Claim Reclaim. X-Claim Reclaim. Have fun. Good, good job, thanks. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Uh, late in the day session, uh, hopefully it's uh, sufficiently interesting for you at this point in the day. Um, thanks again. Uh, my uh, topic today is going to be uh, really focused on x-ray uh, technology and innovations in x-ray technology. Uh, and, you know, basically its role inside of food processing, uh, food safety, and your production lines, but also where it's leading in terms of new opportunities we have in the marketplace. So, let me sh make sure I got the clicking thing. This was a problem for me last time. There we go. So first off, I want to start with some basics. Everybody's pretty familiar with, you know, inline food safety inspection, classic devices like metal detectors uh, and x-rays. So basically, uh, x-rays will perform density, density measurements, so inspect for dense form material, whereas metal detectors look for uh, magnetic or conductive material. So essentially, you know, in those two categories, you're looking at basically uh, ferrous, non-ferrous, uh, stainless steel, which is your standard contaminants for metal detection. X-rays, obviously, first generation X-rays give you much more. Um, all those same things, it becomes a little bit confusing when we list ferrous, non-ferrous, and, and stainless steel, just working off a of density purely on this first generation X-ray. But all the other contaminants that we should be worried about, um, different facilities have different uh, concerns, but you know, certainly glass, stone, bone, uh, plastics, and rubber. So, you know, and what we understand, of course, is that these devices are definitely uh, required part of a food safety program, but increasingly, um, X-ray is starting to emerge as a new safety standard for companies like Costco, Trader Joe's, um, issuing new food safety mandates in their audits to uh, include X-ray, even though they haven't quite defined exactly what that means, uh, programs out there, and starting to gain momentum, but ultimately both metal detection and x-ray just form part of a happy family inside the food, food safety and lines inspection. So in the end, um, pretty much what we're talking about here today is technology and advancements uh, for the x-ray, and that's, that's really what our expertise is in the Canadian marketplace, and we'll get a little bit uh, focused on our history at the end, but basically fo diving right in, uh, we see a major opportunity, um, not only in helping food processors um, and implement the new technology, and we'll talk about what that is, but also what it means to what is a pretty significant uh, issue that we've started to learn about for the last five years, which um, shamefully um, not really aware of how bad uh, the food waste problem is. So we've been working, trying to work with the provincial government and uh, companies like, uh, or nonprofits like uh, Second Harvest, just to bring attention to, you know, basically the amount of uh, finished goods that through the, pro through the process of food safety, unfortunately, um, are ending up in landfill. So but this new technology and my mission, our company's mission is to educate and help bring awareness to, you know, the fact that we have this technology available and that these third party inspection services um, are standing by to assist in a lot of situations where normally you would think about throwing that, that, those finished goods out. So ultimately, this technology advancement is a major leap, and it's opening up a new opportunity inside of uh, food recovery. We all know what basics, basics for, uh, functionality for an X-ray. Um, obviously, form material detection, um, check weighing is is part of the the picture in terms of capabilities on X-ray, um, shape analysis, and also missing components. You know, they're they're capable like the more modern solutions, you know, first generation, but still the more comprehensive solutions can perform all those functions for you. So it's more than just foreign material, but ultimately the, um, the advancements inside of X-ray um, are really focused on the foreign material detection and it's increased so dramatically. Um, on my team, and I have well-seasoned people that have been in X-ray for 20 years, 
Um, working with this new technology, it's just basically Star Trek for them, and they're like little kids. Uh, unbelievable detection capabilities. So basically, um, just focusing on here, sorry. Um, so the, the current term, and this is really the problem that we're, we're trying to address, or help address. Current rate uh, for, food price, for food price increases has been dramatic. Basically, we're at 10% 10, 10 uh, in 2023. And the studies are, studies are out there, you know, um, the food, food Banks Canada produced a study also uh, demonstrating that like, there's just dramatic increases in people going to food banks, 15% increase. So there's obviously a food crisis happening. Um, and that's, you know, there's many factors obviously associated to, to this, but we can't ignore the fact that, the, that on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis in any one of your food processing facilities, we're making decisions to send food production into landfill. I know it's a bit of a bummer, right? <laughs> but basically, there's good news uh, inside of uh, you know working with innovation. Um, you know, last year, for example, we we saved over 80 million dollars of uh, food uh, and value for uh, here just in Ontario. So, you know, current prices in response to foreign material contamination incidents, you know, that's an issue. This is going to be where we're going to head with the agenda, and then of course advancements in X-ray, uh, and then inspection and production recovery. So basically with this in mind, let's talk about current practices, which everybody's obviously familiar with. You know, we're all operating under food safety programs or inside your, your production facilities. Uh, just in Ontario, which I found to be pretty interesting, uh, we have the third largest food processing uh, economy in North America at $35 billion. So it's a pretty good area to focus for a company like ours trying to generate awareness. Um, so basically our food safety standards are leading to you know, basically, and it's great that we're, we're working hard at continuously improving those food safety standards, and I think that that's a mission that, that's noble, and we, we definitely need to go in that direction. But we have to understand that inside of that, um, there's, a, there's a major problem that's occurring inside of food waste. So what do we do, right? We always have to look for innovation. So, you know, basically, to put a number to it, in the analysis work that we've done in market research just in Canada, um, we're looking at about a billion dollars worth of food due to foreign material contamination going into landfill. So significant, right? So the impacts, you know, obviously, is, you know, when we're throwing food out um, inside of uh, production facilities, you know, it's going to impact the supply chain, obviously profitability for the organization, um, major impacts to the environment, um, and obviously food security prices, which is significant. So breaking that breakdown in the impacts here, so uh, landfill waste management, which is a, a significant issue. You know, we all live in this society. Um, these are challenges we all have to face. And you know, basically our waste, our waste management is just surging. And anything we do to limit that is a, a major, major um, a benefit. Costs I mentioned earlier, basically the disposal, just the disposal charges that you're paying for destruction of the, the finished goods. Um, you know, that's a significant dollar value, not to mention, obviously, the, the actual cost of replacing that production for, uh, for your operation. Um, so basically affects the competitiveness and then ultimately um, something people don't really recognize, there's an 80 times effect in the methane production of throwing finished goods, food into, into uh, landfills. So that's an emission issue and obviously it all strikes against sustainability and uh, directly affects food prices and something we can do definitely do something about it. So what do we do? You know, this innovation, what is it? So, you know, we've, as a society, always had problems and challenges. And at the forefront of that is really innovation, is what typically we've turned to to, to solve these problems. So looking at, uh, you know, where we stand here, do a little history on this inspection technology for material and finished goods, um, you know, leading to, you know, Problems and costs for your organization, certainly challenging your food safety programs. Um, give you a little bit of history here, metal detection. Metal detection has been around actually since the First World War. Um, but in food uh, and the commercial application and in-line inspection, since the 1980s, basically. That's when we started to see metal detectors emerge into in-line inspection devices 
Um, again, performing, looking for you know, ferrous content, magnetic, uh, and high conductivity uh, um, form material. So x-rays uh, didn't follow too late after that, but basically first generation x-ray, uh, which is essentially just dense, looking for dense contaminant. Uh, started to emerge into in the 90s, and that was mostly in applications where, um, you know, the packaging you're dealing with cans or metalized foils, or basically there's there's an inability or a challenge that metal detectors couldn't be used. Um, so that's really the the where it first got adopted. Second generation uh, X-rays, which basically is dual energy solutions, and that's going to give get, basically started giving us better capability emerged out of the securities, um, um, uh, securities inspection airports basically looking for plastic explosives. So that technology was adopted from, from there and that essentially gave you better material discrimination looking for inorganic to organic. So in the end, it just gave you a better form material inspection net to, to use. So there's, there's, there's a, some, a lot of those solutions out there as well. Uh, third generation X-ray uh, photon counting is what I'm here to talk to you about today, uh, and that's really new. Uh, and uh, you can thank the poultry industry for it. Basically, um, uh, they uh, really drove it. But uh, ultimately, it came from uh, uh, CT scanners in Siemens and developing new uh, de detection uh, systems, det detectors um, that completely revolu revolutionized uh, our capability. So today, inside of uh, food processing plants, like 90% of our operations have metal detectors. So we're kind of living in the 80s still. So that's a, it's a significant thing. You know, that said, metal detectors are still playing a really valuable role, um, you know, in food safety. You know, alongside of the uh, generation one and generation two x-ray technologies, um, you know, it's still very, very essential, but it doesn't do anything towards this issue of finished goods. Um, I'm sure, I'm not gonna take a survey, but basically, I'm sure everybody has had a metal hit uh, where your metal detectors didn't pick anything up, yet through a line inspection, you've seen there's metal shavings and off everything goes on hold. So metal detectors can only do you know, a certain level of job and Gen 1, uh, Gen 1 x-rays, just sl not slightly better, much better, but photon counting technology just is a complete safeguard uh, towards uh, most of the form control issues they experience in your facility. So what's, what's photon counting? So this is part of the, when I'm building my presentation, to str struggled with trying to explain what it takes a, a couple weeks of uh, academic experience to, to truly understand what, what it is. It really is in the detector, okay? So essentially, the detector styles that were in generation one and generation two um, x-rays, so, so launched in the 90s and, and the early 2000s, um, use basically simulators, and you know that simulator process. And I'm showing you a slide here. So the new photon technology uses a completely different, like just tear that detector out and throw it, throw in the the new the new uh, the new technology crystal semiconductors. So the difference being in just looking at how X-ray is produced. So when you're generating the X-ray energy from an X-ray tube, passing it through the product, going through the belt, and then your detector sits below. Those, those, that X-ray is basically photons. And those photons in the older style units, and you can see here basically, um, you're passing through a ceramic simulator first. So this is X-ray energy passing through the product. So meat, poultry, ready to eat meals, whatever it is. Um, and it's getting either, you know, um, it's basically getting slowed down um, by the actual contact with the product um, and absorbed by, by the product. So in the old style technology, basically, once it got to the detector, you got to this ceramic, ceramic simulator, and then at that point, uh, there's a conversion process that happens. Um, it creates basically energy if a diode will light up and create an, ele an electrical impulse that's converted. So there's all these steps, and it's really inefficient, basically. It's like, um, the best way to explain it to you would be, um, the first digital camera you ever had compared to your iPhone today, right? So there's a, the resolution is nowhere near possible, uh, comparable, sorry. And the new technology, photon counting, essentially is just remarkable. It just eliminates all those steps in the process. So the photons are actually absorbed direct, directly in, into the semiconductor, 
and they're measured and they're counted. Um, and correlation with all the algorithms and the outputs of this process inside, because there's two, two things here, we're generating images with this, right? Then you have the algorithms to actually analyze those images. But you're essentially getting a 400% better uh, resolution than the old style units. What that means is basically you're, dis dis you're going to distinguish between organics and inorganic matter, which form a till, plastics, rubbers, and a whole host of other things, uh, things that we don't want in our, our food, um, suspect contaminants, they tend to be you know, inorganic. So food being organic. So we're able to scrub out the organics out of the image, the food, and what's left is basically things we don't want. So the dramatic, bottom line is a dramatic enhancement in formal material detection, um, which is incredible. Um, and even things on stainless steel, stainless steel. So the example I gave you earlier about stainless steel shavings on a line where your metal detector didn't see it, and maybe you have an x-ray, your first generation x-ray, didn't see it either. Um, stain, we're getting stainless steel down to like 0.2 millimeters. It's, it's remarkable. So for smaller form material detection, uh, and and better, better, than, better than it was ever thought possible. So just uh, to finish up, some history on who we are. We've been in the business uh, a bit. Um, coming up uh, 20, 20 years, um, basically it's, uh, we're a division of Plant Automation, this company that I own, with my uh, partner, Matt Bedard. Um, and uh, we've opened up uh, two years ago, the first, uh, two and a half years ago now, the first food um, recovery center in Canada. Um, which is extra reclaim. So it's basically a turnkey um, team, processes, facility um, to uh, remain responsive to any of the, the emergency um, hits, food, uh, on hold for material contamination issues that our clients have. And we've built a pretty big clientele at this point. Um, we're, we're actually trying to work with the, the provincial government as well to bring attention to this because we see a lot of you know, obviously the government's behind recycling centers. Well, this is a huge problem. Um, and, you know, we believe more than just a business mission, um, this is a, um, uh, it's a moral mission for us. So, um, so basically, our, our, to wrap up our mission, our mission statement, using the best possible inspection technology to support food processors in sustainable, hitting their sustainability goals. It's not just about saving your company money. It's about... Uh, food prices, uh, environmental issues, this is, it impacts a number of, number of areas. So this is our mission and uh, I thank you for your time. All right, you don't get off that easy. Do you have any questions for uh, JP? Kick that light like six times today. We've got a mic coming. Here, come take a Just seat. Just nothing technical. <laughs> Something deeply technical. Ron. Uh, JP, cost between a uh, generation two and a generation three. Cost, cost difference. Uh, $60,000, basically. So uh, more to the point, uh, the cost between a, a standard ge first generation detector, x-ray, and the new photon to counting, about eighty dollars to $90,000. Any follow-up, Ron? Hello, hi. This is Debras here from Jira Foods and Beverage. I have a question here regarding your uh, X-ray thing. Uh, so what about the inline? So uh, you have the finished product going through the belt. What about the inline X-ray system? So, so is your question about uh, implementing uh, X-ray photon counting technology inline? Yes. Yeah, so it's commercially available. Um, you know, it's you know, great, great pivot off the first question. Um, that's the challenge. It's it's capital capital intensive, and I think everybody here is exposed to the process of food safety, food safety and budgets. Um, you know, and implementing devices or anything really, and when it comes to it comes to capital expenditures, um, you know, it's really at the end of the day, it's it's. Your food processors, your clients are the ones you're going to be you're going to be operating and responding to in terms of what their requirements are. Um, as I mentioned, Costco and Trader Joe's are the first ones to say X-ray, but they haven't set any standards about what type of form material uh, and what the risks are, where where you're supposed to where you're supposed to go to from your basic form material detection levels now down to what just implement X-ray. So. 
we've, we're trying to work with Costco also to, to, if they're going to go in this direction, that they go in a, um, a way that's educated um, the, to help them make be best decisions. But basically, sorry I didn't directly answer your question, but basically, yes, um, there's currently in North America approximately 85 um, PXT solutions. And P these PXT solutions, uh, you'd be surprised at the companies that are implementing them. It's not just, it's the hardest applications, it's some, some of these, um, uh, some, some of these just, just basically um, leaders, I would say, inside of food safety. If you're gonna do it, implement the best technology is, is really where I see their mindsets. But yeah, there's, there's about 85 units already, already in place. Uh, but people, you know, we get a lot of response from, from Costco and client, clients, food processors coming to us asking, asking about, you know, help in the inspection studies, which we do for them, of course. Um, but their first, first position is we just need to implement an x-ray. Then after coming to our facility and we have an education center, uh, we, t we teach, you know, where the levels of technology are. Um, I would say there's probably about a more than half, more than 50% higher converge rate. People that are coming in to buy on price and really, um, but then leaving with our mandates for food safety and doing the best possible job possible and making the argument with, uh, with ownership to get, uh, get PXC technology. I have a question for you, JP. I mean, so something that is a hallmark of the QA, QC universe is creating SOPs. And, and often it's very difficult to derogate from whatever is down on paper, which could be a problem in a crisis. And so in order to work with X-ray Reclaim or, or a, a similar entity where your, your goal is food recovery, um, how, do you, how do you engage uh, I mean, audience members to make that a possibility in a crisis, right? Like I just, when I'm working through a crisis, like one of the battles that we have is, is like, here's what your SOP says. Your SOP doesn't say anything about, you know, wheeling your product to a warehouse to have it checked for foreign bodies. Sure. What do you do? I mean, well, it's it's convention, and basically, in, inside everybody has a uh, you know inside a, a, your programs, you have deviations, and you have plans for responding to different different situations. Certainly, foreign material. Um, you know, what we try to mandate and communicate in awareness is basically, you know, it's it's almost almost the first thing that I say say to any one of you when I like, connect out there is like, just write us into your program. At least you'll think about calling. Um, so it's essentially it's a response. It's, it's it's an established you know under duress, um, black, and, black and white uh, uh, roadmap to, to working with us. You know, it, it's, we have um, immediate contact, uh, uh, our process is in place for 24 hour response in terms of inspection, inspection validation after we receive your materials. Um, it's a well healed, well established process. And I think if anybody here, we have some clients here who have worked with us, um, you probably could attest to the fact that it's pretty, pretty efficient and, uh, and it, really, it really is quite professional and I'm very proud of our team. Any questions from the audience? Hi, um, Natasha from Metro Supply Chain Group. I just wanted to ask if this uh, new generation of X-ray uh, has impact of food quality, like is there gonna be some change in the food structure, like protein change uh, or something else is going to... It, it, absolutely not. I mean, for, first off, X-ray, X -ray, there's been plenty of studies. Um, obviously, they've been around for a long time, and, and there's always concerns with n when new technologies come, 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 to the, come to the marketplace. So those studies are in place. Essentially, what we're talking about, the change here, uh, is no change in the actual X-ray energy. It's actually after it hits the food and go, goes through and hits the detector, it's a new detector. So essentially, you're dealing with the same, same level of energy, um, going going at the food, and I have one more question. What about the calibration of these uh, units? Pardon me. Calibration. Calibration. Same same as sta same as standard X-rays. Essentially, validation calibration. Same process. Uh, kind of in line with what you would expect to, in, in when you're doing with the metal detector. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, New technologies. I mean, that's that's some, that's a, one of the reasons we actually in founding founding the company that I thought it was a huge uh, necessity. And so when actually started coming to the uh, the Canadian marketplace, um, when I was back in the day and involved in it, my first thing was like we have to set up education because this these were black boxes for people. So the questions like calibration, questions questions like cost of ownership, 
um, changes to food composition structure, safety issues with them. Um, they're valid. They're all very valid questions that, and, and deserve, deserve answers. And I think a responsible company, which I'd like to think we are, um, takes education seriously. And, you know, you're all invited to, to book a time and, and go through that process with us and inspect our facility. Um, do Thank a lot you. of it. Thank you. More questions? Hi, this is Navneet from Trophy Foods. You touched base on the size as well in one of the things when we were talking about the parameters uh, for the X-ray capabilities. So when you're talking about sizes, is it the commodity sizes that could be different or is the foreign material different size? For example, if we do trail mixes, right, you would have different sizes of mixes going together. And at the same time, you could have a challenge of different sizes of foreign materials, mm. right? So have we kind of challenged uh, the X-ray to help us in that scenario as well? And how successful we have been? So I'm, I'm not quite clear to your question. Is it is about It's about you know, size, for, of, size of the product, commodities, so, right? And the effect on the size of the form exactly. of Exactly, and Type also, because that's a complex situation itself, right? When you yep. have one, particular product with same size or same shape, it's easier to validate certain equipment. But when you have that complexity within that package itself, and then also you have different um, foreign materials that could be, right, plastic or, sure. or wood or anything. So how have you come across that scenarios and how Yeah, so, so basically you? in the end, you know, when a client's approaching us, you know, we, we will, we're starting with essentially a, a baseline of foreign material that already, they're already doing, and if they're coming from metal detection, it's one thing. We know what, what those foreign materials are. The, basically, it's ferrous, not ferrous, and stainless steel. Moving to X-ray, what we try to encourage is bring us your, your actual foreign bodies that you have found through, through the years and the, you've collected, which I encourage you to retain those, um, because even though um, we know it's nylon or it's it's some composition of plastic or rubber, rubber gasket. There are so many manufacturers of all those materials, of all those possible uh, contaminants that, that sit inside your process. Um, once you understand, understand the actual technology itself and you know, how, how it works, in, you'll come to re respect the need for inspection, the inspection validation testing that we do. So we don't just say, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to hit that size, that material on that product. Um, it's a very, it's a lengthy process, um, but it involves a collaborative effort. But ultimately, um, once that's established, you can write it into your CCP. That's interesting. Actually, having that library, that would help, right? If you, because that's one of the things that we are also exploring as a demand for, a, for Costco, right? It's like you're going through different technologies and seeing what's the best fit. And I guess to your point, it's best to have your own library to start off because there's so many different types of plastics even. Even exactly. for example, the almond, it has, you know, sometimes you could have it within shell, but that could be like, it interfaces as a wood as well, so it would not sometimes detect or not detect. Like extra has its own, um, you know, its limitations as well. So uh, thank you for your question. Is that, are we out of time? Because I have one no, last please. comment. This is great. Okay, so, so, um, so we're, we're based here. Fortunately, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's a great uh, community and, and, and great proximity contact with so, so many people. But basically, we operate all through North America. Um, so we, we do this full inspection, inspection and, and uh, re rework recovery process turnkey at our facility, but we actually do it mobile. And we're in Houston and Florida right now in California. Um, so we have mobile teams of x-rays and it's growing very quickly because of the PXC technology and also, also the processes. But the one thing I wanted to emphasize and maybe leave you with is that as we begin to generate a, uh, more and more awareness, I'm, I'm climbing higher up inside of um, organizations, inside of uh, vice presidents and presidents and, and owners of company and to communicate this message. Because I think it's something that you guys, you guys would um, grab onto is start looking at this technology as not just a food safety, it certainly is that, a food safety technology, but it's something that's going to truly impact sustainability um, when it's studied. And I have been brought into, uh, and we have master service agreements and contracts with, with like billion dollar companies now um, to convert 
all their inspection technology that was in their line just to do food safety inspection, but now also to mitigate loss. Um, because they, you know, they've, they've done, the analysis work's been done, and you know, four or five hits inside of a facility can come to a million dollars pretty fast. Um, so it's financially driven, but it's, uh, it's also sustainability targets. So food safety professionals such as yourself can start to bring that, that, that message, um, you know, a broader mandate, if you will, um, other than just you know, basically food safety technology. Awesome. Thank you so much for your questions. It was great, JP. Thank you. Thank you. For sharing this. Take him up on the opportunity to go visit the plant. It's remarkable.